coffee club, coffee club. Grind your beans and grab your favorite mug. It's Ali Morgan, George and Gus. It's them boys from coffee club. Boys from coffee club. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Coffee Club podcast, episode 132. I am joined here in person by Oliver Hoare, and then back with us today is Jorge Beamish coming to us live from Boulder. George, how are you feeling? Hello, boys. I'm, I'm happy to be back. I was just telling these guys pre-recording, I had a, I had a listen to, to last week's episode, and you know what? I'm glad I wasn't on there. It was, uh, <laughs> it was a bit too Australian themed for my liking, but I, I enjoyed it a lot. And uh, yeah, ha- happy to be back. Ha- how's it down balance it out. We'll balance this it week. out by a New Zealand based trivia. Yeah, we've got it. We've <laughs> yeah. got it hidden. The new New Zealand trivia hidden. We're gonna do some Lord of the Rings role play today, and that is actually, um, as you guys can hear, perfect timing because we have another plane sound. <laughs> get your get your counters out. That is plane number one in the first minute of the show. Ollie and I are once again recording from our backyard. Uh, nice and early in the morning. It's it's eight thirty here, so probably you know probably a pretty busy time for fly for planes flying into into Adelaide Airport. Yeah. I would guess. I would say so. I think one of those planes will have our coach on it. Hopefully, he did miss his connection. Um, I think he was too confident in a forty minute connection from an international transfer to a domestic flight. Um, now an American knows how it feels. You know, when you when you miss connection flights, it sucks when you go international. Because I use, I I missed a few in college. I'm sure I think. no American has ever missed. Was connection. that in Sydney though? No, it was just going into the US, going to a different country, and then having to connect in a no. domestic flight there. Dathan's one. Right. Oh, Dathan's one. Yeah, he made it. To, he's in Sydney now, Sydney. but he I think his flight was, I think it, he's like, like had forty minutes. No, he's didn't he tell you that he's. He's playing the delay. Yeah, so, so that's why. He so we, you have forty minutes from the from the delay to to get to like the he's, next. He's playing terminal. out of San Francisco, got delayed. <laughs> my, so he didn't make it. My connection through Sydney when I left from pre, when I was trying to go back to New Zealand, and I took a small detour through Sydney. That was the most stressful connection of my life. <laughs> really, the arrivals process in Sydney makes no sense. You have to. Like, it's very very. Out, you have to print out that little like ticket thing Hard, yeah. and hand it to like hand it to just anyone you find <laughs> yeah i didn't i went through with denny matt denny maybe he, they, he had no clue what was happening either maybe they just do that for the kiwis or something i don't know i've had very smooth process i've always had a smooth yeah. process as well it's very easy. but i understand why people you can get confused form, you <laughs> know to everything and then you put it into a machine bing bang boom you're in the country mm. What people make the mistake of is that when you walk through, there's like two little kiosks where you get the card and everyone lines up for that. Whereas yeah. if you keep walking down, there's, there's like a hundred of them. More yeah. So people like get confused and think, well, oh, I have to wait in this line. Well, yeah, they get confused because it's really fucking confusing. Well, it's because no one's there explaining it. But because Morgan and I have been through that airport so many times, we know you can just go all the way down. So that's a little trip, a little tip for people traveling into to Sydney. Fair, I've never had to do a transfer. So yeah, I've, I've always had, just gone through. I don't know what the actual transfer is. Well, getting, I, I did one. Getting into Sydney. Was, my, my flight was delayed. See, when you come in from the US, normally, like the flights that we get on, it's normally actually pretty chill because you're like the first, you're within like, you're like the first five planes of the day, mm. you know, because the, the flight from America, from the, from LA or San Fran gets in so early in the morning. So those are actually pretty chill. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Just the, oh, the whole the whole world will be fucking Adelaide, right, for the meet this week. Yeah. So the airport will be just chocker all week. It will be chocker. I mean, there's a lot of planes flying over last weekend because there was the AFL um, weekend here. I can't remember what the weekend's Probably called. Far more this week, yeah. But yeah, this weekend will be big, big one, <laughs> huge one. Athletic celebration. Oh yes. Down here in Adelaide. Before we Wait, get into really all... nine days. Well. Technically, it's, yes, yeah. but that's. I think that's maybe including the junior races. It's not. It's not nine days in the way that like the US one is twelve days because it matches the Olympic schedule. Mm-hmm. It's, it's nine days. I think that takes into account literally everything. Para para athletes, yeah, juniors, juniors para, so like overall national championship for everyone. Uh, going on, like so there is there is a lot going on, but I I think like they've really concentrated. Um, a lot of the finals on just Saturday, Sunday. So in terms of a lot of the big finals, it is just across, like there's two big days on the weekends that they're focusing on. But mm. the actual whole meet technically is, yeah, it's a long one. Nice. 
Can't wait. Yeah. Hopefully I get the days right. I've been struggling already with the... Uh... It is annoying. <laughs> it's not easy. And then you throw in the, the half an hour change and, and everyone... That's the most good. ridiculous thing I've ever heard. For anyone yeah, I've never heard of that. Hopefully he's going to be watching some races. Adelaide is on a half time zone. Yeah. What? I... <laughs> I didn't even know that, and I'm from. Yeah, I didn't know that either until we got in, and I'm like looking at my watch. I was like, "Why is it? There's a half an hour difference here. It's crazy." I love it though. I love it. Though. They yeah. just want to be different. They just want to be different. Why not? But yeah, before we get into previewing all that, we should just do a little March Madness update, which will be pretty outdated actually by the time it um by the time like this episode airs, because I think is the final game on right now, or is it tonight? It's tonight. It's in like two hours. Tonight. So maybe we'll do a proper review of it next week when all the results are in. But we can announce the women's winner, which is, wow, this is a really good name. <laughs> <laughs> ESPN 61628906's picks number one. Uh, they, did a, they were in the top 0.1%, 99.9 percentile. Only nine guesses wrong. I'm not even sure how that's possible. Play number two. I don't even know how that's possible. But there were six people in the top top 1% in the women's brackets. So they're invited to the party with George, which we'll have to discuss more next week as well. But Yeah. Last week, <laughs> I, last did. week I, did, I did mention that you should just take him for a trip to New Zealand. I feel like that's, that's worth the kind of achievement that they've achieved here with the March Madness bracket is George can take you guys for a New Zealand trip. How, how many top 1%ers do we have in, in the men's? I didn't realize we were counting women. The men's side is, is similar. similar. I think I think it'll end up being about five or so. That's On eleven. Side? Something like that. That's a pretty good this party, a, honestly. It's a large gathering. Yeah. Yeah. You're gonna have to think of something. Or we're gonna have to think of something to reward all these amazing much madness madnesses. Did you see the Iowa Yukon final four game was like the most watched ESPN basketball game in history or something? Including really? all M- all NBA games ever or that espn has been streaming since like 2002 or something jeez that's crazy that's amazing that's so crazy i can tell you based on my twitter that i i'm like fully i'm fully part of it as well like all my my algorithm on twitter is all like caitlin clark Mm. related news like nothing about the men's it's all just about caitlin clark it's it's pretty cool yeah i've seen tweets about it saying that it's the uh the women's tournament's been way more followed than the men's like a lot just just watching, just watching like that journey with Iowa, which is pretty I did crazy. Watch game and it was and her threes are kind of crazy. I love watching. Yeah, it's the best game I've seen this whole March Madness so far. I mean, like I think the games sides. have been more entertaining on the women's tournament side than the men's. That's what I've seen on on on, twi- on people's opinions on Twitter that so the women's have watched one game. <laughs> I've watched highlights. I've watched highlights, and I'm saying that this is people's opinions on Twitter. This is not my opinions because I've only watched highlights. But they've said that the women's tournament was very entertaining. I mean, the men's going to be always entertaining, but the women's has been very entertaining, apparently. Yeah. What, what have you guys are? been doing down there? Oh, <laughs> Drinking coffee. That's a big question, George. That's a big question. Uh, <laughs> shall we get into it? Well, first off, if that was you, the winner, please reach out to either Wamteng or our Instagram account with proof of it, and then we will get you the hat, which is your prize, and then same on the men's side. But we'll report on that more next week. We'll, we'll see how that all that all ends up. But, yeah, well done to everyone that. But, yeah, Adelaide, what have we been up to? Life here, when you don't have the structure of the team training, is very relaxed. <laughs> pretty, pretty amazing. Very relaxed. <laughs> you can train whenever you want. You can do whatever you want every day. You can take things pretty easy in the mornings if you so choose. Uh, so we've been, I mean, nothing crazy. We've been out for a few meals, a couple of. We had a date night. A couple of date nights. Yeah. Been there. A lot of coffee has been drunk, going out for coffee with the boys. We've been we've been very lucky. We, we did talk about this last week, but once again, a big shout out and a thank you to the amazing running community that is based here in Adelaide. Been very kind to us, looking after us very well. So yeah. we've been hanging out with them a bunch. Uh, we've been always still been playing a bunch of Halo. <laughs> Morgan's been playing Halo too, to be fair. I played a couple games of Halo. Still not that fun. Definitely. But you, but you keep playing. Well, did I play one game yesterday? You did. No, I didn't. I'm pretty sure. Didn't I come back from something and you were you were in you were inside playing um, 
uh, husky rate or something. No, that was you left. You door dashed and you went outside to get it, and then you came back in, and it, I hadn't touched it. No, no, no. That was oh, maybe that was yesterday. Maybe that was yesterday. But I remember walking in from a run or something, and I didn't even turn on the Xbox, and you were in already playing. You like turned it on and started playing. You, you made, this must be a dream. No, no, no. You're just in denial. Because we ran together. So how could you have come back from a run? I, I came back from something. Oh, I, I was not like. Oh, I, I'm. I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure. Regardless, I've been watching <laughs> TV episodes and reading the books. I, I checked out the, a beach here a couple of days ago. Oh, I do have a story about it, actually. So I went down to visit the beach to hop in the, the ocean water, uh, which was lovely, pretty cold. The beaches here are they're, they're very just, if you just like told a, or asked a child to like draw a picture of a beach, they'd just draw like what the beaches here look like. They're very standard, like in a good way. They're nice uh, and they're very big, which is cool. But when I went down, it was a little bit chilly. I hopped in the water and I was just I was just in there for probably five minutes and I started it was like only me in there. Like there was there was no one else in, in the section that I was in. Uh, but there was like a really big sand bank. So I was like only in up to my waist pretty much. And I start to I turn around to start coming back in and I see behind me, like like in between me and the the ocean the, the sand like directly my path. I'm like, wow, that's that's a really big piece of seaweed right there. And then I see a flipper come out of the water. I'm like, wait, what the hell is that? And I for initially I was I was kind of shitting myself. I was a little bit scared that it was or well, initially I thought it didn't make sense to me because it was so close to the sand. I'm like, is that a dolphin? But like how would a dolphin be there? And then like, well what if that's a shark? I might be dead. And then it turns out it was a sea lion. And there was a sea lion like two meters away from me. And it was That's pretty cool. It was like, it was just in like the waves were really small and just kind of in the break and it just kept doing barrel rolls. Like it would, it was just like on its back and then its flippers would come out and then it would just spin around and it would just go along the shoreline just like that. And I spoke to some old people and apparently there's like um, a pier next to there and apparently it just hangs out near the pier and like eats, you know, the uh, whatever sea lions eat around the pier. KFC. KFC. Living the dream. So yeah, I've What's never a sea lion and a seal. They're the same thing. I think they're just different types of seals. I, I don't know. Sea lion sounds a little more scary. Let me look it up. But I think I think seals are bigger based on based on just my. This guy was pretty small. My guess is he wasn't massive. No, but I still I don't know who had the advantage. Like if he had been aggressive in a fight there, because like, could you have taken him? That's what oh. I'm thinking. Like, I'm thinking that I could have just because, like, the water was only up to, like, my waist or below my waist. If it was any deeper, he would have absolutely destroyed me. But in this amount of water, like, I had at least a chance. There's a difference here. So, a sea lion has external ear flaps, generally larger body. They're noisy and they bark. They have front flippers that are large, elongated, and can walk around. And the rear flippers um, are also bigger, whereas a seal doesn't have ears. Its body size is a lot smaller, sounds are quieter, and it's much more of like a... I mean, the sea lion can like spend more time out of the water, like walking around and stuff. So Gus is a yeah. sea lion? Gus is a sea lion, yeah. <laughs> Except Gus's ears are quite quite bigger than a sea lion's. A sea lion's ears look very tiny for its head. <laughs> but um, that's what Morgan saw. So. You would... You would think that at some point the sea lion had to do some pretty egregious acts to, or maybe not egregious, some pretty epic acts to earn that name. I mean, sea lion sounds like it's like a like the the king of the ocean because exactly. like the lion's like the king of the jungle. But I I, I mean, sea lions didn't see don't sea lions uh, oh, they're they're kind of aggressive though. Um, well, no, that's sea, I think that's sea leopard. Those sea ones leopards, are a sea leopard. Those yeah, are the ones that right. eat penguins. Those ones that eat penguins. They're the ones that, that's what I'm thinking of. The ones that eat penguins. I mean, killer whales are like the scariest motherfuckers in the ocean. Those things are crazy. Sea lions are uh, sea lions and sea leopards are pretty. I feel like I wouldn't say chill, I, but I don't think those two things are similar. <laughs> sea lion, right. sea leopard. We're getting off topic. <laughs> I didn't. Okay, sea I, lions and sea leopards are part of the same family, though, right? It's, it's of new to seals. Me that uh, sea leopards exist. So I got. I'm learning a lot right now. <laughs> I was not aware. Of this. What's the what's the um 
animal with the massive narwhal. The narwhal with the big like the unicorn. unicorn. Those things are crazy. They're probably dangerous. Yeah. 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 So anyway, Ollie, DoorDash and, <laughs> and video games for Ollie. That doesn't sound like much has changed. <laughs> okay. To be fair, I DoorDashed once. I love. I love that. That's. Uh, yes, I did DoorDash, but it was once, <laughs> and it was from organized lunch because we were kind of tired and lazy. We got a porto, and it was unreal. Um, but I have been playing a lot of video right. games, and we've been out going, like getting coffee, catching up with. A lot of uh, a lot of people in the running community, and then just enjoying being in in Adelaide. Like it's pretty nice to just walk around and uh, more than to be. Those, have you been enjoying those single shot flat whites? I have always got double shot. I always ask for double shot, except for if I've had too many coffees, and I'll do a single shot. I can't wait to go to New Zealand, and if I if I got a single shot, I will literally like make the biggest deal out of it. Like if, if it's not true what you're saying and it and like the standard at any of the cafes there is a single shot, everything falls apart. I, I definitely think there'll be a single shot place in Adelaide. I mean I'm in uh, New Zealand for sure. For sure. There'll be a single shot place in New Zealand. There's no way. That's a lot of pressure, but I'm I'm willing to I'm willing to stand by it. One thing that I didn't realize they do here, if you order a cappuccino or a flat white uh, they they ask you if you want a small or a large, or maybe they say small or regular. I didn't realize they did that, and it, it's like I think it's the difference between maybe like a six ounce and a, yeah, I don't know what the biggest size is. Twelve ounce. Or, yeah. I think it's twelve. Right? Twelve is massive, actually. Never mind. Yeah, I don't know if you get the regular size if they put a double shot in it, but yeah. Yes, when I say large, I thought they meant like double shot, ten ounce or eight ounce. Yeah, but it's uh, it's just crazy to be back in the this type of culture where they just yeah it's it's so different to america like there are so many cafes here but they're all like packed like they're always so busy and it's just like you, you kind of ask like what is everyone doing like does ever, anyone like work here because seemingly everyone's just out at the cafe or they just just hanging out so uh but it's it's very cool vibe i mean every cafe here too is like pretty high quality in coffee and food oops sorry that was my phone i think you have to be I think you have to be uh, to survive out here. Whereas in America, I think the standard is. No, I'm not trying to just rail on America. I, really do. I think <laughs> the standard is just. It's just different. It's, it's, it's just different culture. culturally different, yeah. So it's very nice to be back here. Is uh, always the Oceania in Adelaide yet? No, they they don't get in until uh, more close to the race, I suppose. I mean, they're probably filtering in now because I guess some of them would be here, but some of them don't compete until the weekend. So I think. Like there, I was actually speaking to Ed Trippis and they don't have, uh, they're all kind of like a little bit doing their own thing in terms of accommodation and all that. So they're a little more, bit more split up. Spread out. So, yeah. Yeah. But everyone will be getting into Adelaide, I guess, in the next couple of days. Um, I guess by the time this episode airs, Ollie will have already competed mm. in the heats. So... We're just assuming hopefully that goes well and uh, <laughs> <laughs> there's no uh, there's no crazy, crazy occurrences and he's in the final and then he'll be competing in the final on in Saturday, Saturday yeah. afternoon. And then Sunday, Morgan races. Sunday then is the 5K. And then I potentially might race as well. Yeah, Ollie will maybe double back in the 5K. So I don't know, I guess um, we were just looking so at it. It's a day list. early, both days here. Mm. It'll be yeah. Friday, Saturday in the US time change but actually the because the races are in the afternoon it's it's like it's late for the u.s but it's it's very like watchable i don't actually know where it's streamed on but it's it's like in the you i think youtube stay up that late. i think it might be youtube okay. but i could find out um okay. and let tom yeah, know Instagram. yeah because i think it i think last time um the national champs a while ago when i raced it was on youtube i'm pretty sure i'm i'm not i'm 100 percent, but I think that's the best way to watch it if you're uh, outside of Australia. How's the forecast looking? I haven't even looked. I haven't checked. <laughs> it, the, the thing that's Is weird. it the same every day? It's, no, it, it changes a lot. Here, I mean, really. temperature-wise, it looks like it's going to be very um, similar. Not, not that hot, like very chill, cl- like partly cloudy. But it looks pretty chill. I mean, th- we say that now, but the weather changes here dramatically. Like yesterday, it was like sunny, rainy, yeah, 
cloudy, every day is windy. Like a, uh, is like a max of 20. And then they, all the days have like the cloud and the sunshine. <coughs> and as we experienced here yesterday, that can mean that it's sunny for one second and then it's raining the next. <laughs> so it can, it can change a lot. But the one thing that we've been told or now experienced, which is pretty common here, is the afternoons get a bit windy. And so all the, all the races are in the afternoon. So decent chance there's a bit of wind. So that'll just mean, I guess, more tactical racing, mm. probably. Mm. Probably. Yeah. That's what we like George to see. English racing. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but should we, should we, I mean, I don't think we're going to preview these races too much because it's just championship racing. Um, but how are you feeling for it all? What are you, what are you thinking? What's the mindset going into this one? I mean, I think um, it's my first race back uh, 10 months. It's been 10 months. And it's funny. I thought I'd be a bit more anxious about it, but I'm pretty excited. So I'm excited to race. I definitely like six weeks ago was feeling less confident than I am now. I'm feeling very confident. The past um, six weeks, I've gotten like really good training, but also my body's just feeling amazing most days. Um, and I feel like the time zone change as well for me was very easy to get back into the swing of things here. So I'm very much excited and looking forward to it and definitely, uh, yeah, going to take advantage of being able to run in a national championship. We don't get to race much at home, so that's exciting. And then we'll see how it goes, but I know I'm entered in the 5K. I've done a lot of um, longer training with the boys, so <laughs> so like I could run a decent 5K, but we'll see how my body pulls up after the two races, 250 and 100s, which I... I don't know if they're going to be. I mean, I'm 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 sure they're going to be tactical, but you just never know with people like Stewie or others who might just want to go for it. But if it's windy and the conditions aren't great, then it'll be much more of a tactical affair, which I'm excited about. You yeah, know what we haven't had in a long time. What a a, a McSqueezy 1500. <laughs> yeah, a McSqueezy. Well, you've got McSwain and and me in it, so we might be squeezing. I mean, I feel like knowing Stewie or seeing how Stewie races. And then seeing how I race, we both love Little a good squeeze. squeeze. <laughs> we love a good squeeze. And like if it's a squeezy race squeeze where it's – if it's a squeeze off where it's 800 out or 600 out, even a K out, it still could be very entertaining because there's a lot of boys that could, could go with it. And uh, I think it'll be an exciting race anyway. Um, but obviously, you've got to get through the first round, make it to the final. That's the plan. And then uh, try and win it. So, yeah. Yeah. It's going to be – I'm looking at um... – Tom's entries he posted for us. Twelve guys run under 340, I think. Well with PRs mm. under three forty. That's pretty good for a like country like Australia. It definitely it's not like enough. just for like a small country, you know? Smaller. Yeah, yeah no, it's pretty it's pretty right. awesome. I mean it, it definitely uh I don't I think someone said it. One of the boys said it like uh um I'm gonna butcher this quote. <laughs> um uh, high a high tide raises all boats. Is that? No, that's it. Is that, that it? Is nice. Yeah. Like I think the high tide of Australian middle distance running is is raising everyone's uh, abilities and and beliefs, and that's an exciting place to be. So yeah, it's uh the field is amazing as well because there's it has everything. It has like at this point, someone like Stewie is you could consider him a veteran. It's got the the record holder. Com Games gold medals and Ollie, but then it's also got these young guns like up and comers who actually are, you know, I guess we'll, we'll find out. But they're, it seems like they're almost at that. Like, I mean, Adam Spencer ran 331 last year. I was <laughs> the most shocking thing for me looking down that list, apart from the depth, was just seeing Cam Meyer's birth year of 2006. I was like, what the? F-? Like, I mean, no, we say it every time, but it's, just, it's, it's very, it makes you feel very old seeing that. I'm, I'm 10 years older than him. Jesus. Uh, so it's just like it's got everything this field so I think it'll be amazing and the other really interesting dynamic is uh, Stewie because he just has such a reputation for the way that he races and everyone knows it and he always does it but I'm just wondering if this will be the time where he wants to try something sit and sit and kick it's it's a it's such it is a risk but I don't know it's just like everyone I think feels like they really know what he's going to do. And then the issue with him doing that is there are just too many other good runners now who can stick on him. And if he wants to solo it, it'll be so hard to shake him off. He's almost like uh, he needs a pacemaker, which would be crazy if they did have someone pace him. But it's like like even El Garouge, when El Garouge was the best runner in the world, 
he he wouldn't win all the championship races because you know everyone was like good enough to sit on him and then in the i think was it the 2004 olympics the morocco ended up like having essentially like a pacemaker for him like they had someone that was i think good enough to make the final to then just pace el garouge so that he could run it from the front and sounds like <clears throat> sounds like someone else we know <laughs> what me <Jingy. laughs> no, oh jingy <laughs> jingy <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> it, it, is. it is a jingy, yeah. He needs a pacemaker. Yeah. He, that's why Henrik, uh, Henrik's trying to get fit enough to make the final. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, Philip. Philip could be back. I think he could be back. They would actually do that for him as well. That'd be so they literally would. <laughs> yeah, and they could probably make it through. That'd be awesome to see. Actually. Yeah. That'd be cool. But yeah, it's going to be an amazing 1500 on Saturday. I'm very excited to see mm. how, uh, how all he does in his first race back because, yeah, as as he alluded to these last six weeks, just been crushing training. So fit and ready to go. Fit and ready I think to you go. have been training definitely harder than anyone else on the team. Cause no one else has had like such a, like the, no one else has had the same preparation as you where they kind of had to get fit in a short amount of time. And then like, didn't have any other races to get to like use as a stimulus, like as a hard workout. So you've just had, Hard workouts on hard workouts that no one else has been doing really. Yeah, it's, yeah. Been, it's been crazy to see, but it's uh, it's been working for sure. I mean, I think the so, the one thing that gives me confidence is I feel like I'm ahead of where I thought I would be, like which is a nice factor of like just giving me confidence and to compete with these guys because they're so they're so good and they've been racing so well recently. It's not like these races have been particularly for Cam uh, and Stewie and jesse hunt like a lot of these guys and jai a lot of these guys have been racing and racing well so it gives me confidence that the training is doing well so if i was training bad i would not be feeling good about it so that's a that's a good that's a good sign for it and and you know it's a good start to the year start the season just enjoy it yeah sure well, for beamish what are, that's my plan. what are your expectations mom uh you know i'm really not sure how the 5k is going to play out I, I have a feeling i'm not sure what it's going to look like with people doubling back from the 1500s like ollie and, and stewie like how that's going to play out i wouldn't be surprised i have a really small feeling that like they'll end up being a pacemaker in the race in some form but i mean i'm not i don't know maybe we'll find out before the race just because like you know there's a lot of because of the ranking system if you can run a decent time at your national champs like it, it helps a lot for everyone so I think everyone would like it to be a slight, like not an all-out race, but just slightly faster. Playing, playing number three. Had a bit of a gap there. That was a, that was a long gap. <laughs> long gap. Uh, so I wouldn't be surprised if someone is making it quick, but I'm not going to bank on that. What I what I think is most likely is there'll be some athletes who will want it to be faster, in particular the last mile or so. And I'm thinking of like, you know, a Jack Reyna and like a Kai Robinson, I think if they're feeling good. They like to, they like to push it um, before the last lap. So for me, it's, I think it's pretty basic. I'm just, you know, trying to, I'm just racing it. And I feel pretty confident in, in my ability to go with a fast pace or to, you know, kick down at the end. So I'm hoping to just be patient and just be able to stick with it and just, just stay as, get to the one lap to go, you know, conserving as much energy as possible and then just rip it at the end. But who knows? Who knows how it'll play out? I remember last time I raced a national championships, we had Pat Tiernan in the race and it was just from the gun. It was like all out. And for me at least, and I was just like, I was just hanging on, just kind of yo-yoing. So um, that was a tough one. And I could, you know, maybe it will be like that again. So we'll see. But yeah, definitely, definitely, even myself, I'm I'm a little bit like I don't know exactly what form I'm in. Like I know I know I'm in good form, obviously, but like there's just a lot of question marks on um, everyone because like it's like it's a group of guys that haven't raced each other like really ever. You could say that for like a lot of the races actually. Like yeah. besides probably Stewie and I, like I haven't raced a lot of those guys in a while, and like in the five k too, like Rayna kai you yeah stewie rambo like you guys don't race occasionally together like it's not like in the u.s system where you go to boston or new york and and duke it out this is like yeah a very rare occurrence so for that factor it would be for that fact it'll be pretty interesting yeah 100 percent. a bit of uncertainty but 
just good old fashioned racing, which which we love. And yeah, I'm feeling pretty pretty fit, ready to go. I can confirm that Morgan's looking pretty good. Had a had a grind of a workout. <laughs> Workout yeah by yourself too that was rough <laughs> it's like the workout on paper was not that bad it was three sets of 1600 threshold three by 400 at 62 which on paper for us is not that crazy but it was just one of those workouts george where i mentally was really chill going into it and then i turn up and i'm like fuck i gotta run like five miles on the track on my own right now and then it was just like so you know sometimes you feel like you're pushing to run, like let's say 62, 400. Like it just felt hard. <laughs> it's like, man, I really felt, I really wish this, this didn't feel so hard right now. So, but that's normally a good sign if I have a bit of a like um, a wake up, yeah, or like start a workout, like refresher, a, a week out from the race, it's refresher. Like, oh, shit, we gotta start to turn it on. So I just start to do. I don't know if I did. I tell you guys that I do my uh, like the week of the race every day. I try to do some visualization now. What do you visualize? The race. The race. <laughs> that makes sense. That just makes just sense. to confirm. Yeah. Just to confirm. I don't know if you're visualizing like dinner or... <laughs> I visualize what I'm going to eat the next day. No, I mean, I do that as well every day. But no, Do you I do stopped. like do the first like five days out? Is like day one, visualize first K. Day two, <laughs> second K. Or is That'd it the whole day, race yeah. every day? See if you were day if you were day late visualizing you'd only get to the fourth K and you're like shit I didn't visualize the last K of the race. Shit, what am I gonna do? <laughs> I'll pop out after 4K. <laughs> no, I, I, the way I do it is I don't do it for very long because I, I just find like a song that I kind of really like or like that puts me in the right headspace, and then I just think about the race and I think about I I go between thinking about like the hard moments of the race and working through the hard moments and then also on the flip side, visualize like succeeding, you know, like things, things going well and feeling really good. Like I, I try to flip between mm. those two things. So, so, so will yeah. you like wear AirPods and, and listen to that song during the race? I should, shouldn't I? Yeah. If it was, if it wasn't illegal, it would have been pretty <laughs> mad to see Morgan with Is that AirPods in. Is that I think it's illegal to run with a phone or some sort of device in your well, ears. just put your phone in the, in the infield. <laughs> yeah, it should be right there. The range? Is the range good enough? <laughs> I wonder. I don't know. Request mid race. No. <laughs> oh, but they you play like it too early. Skipping songs. Yeah, <laughs> they put the song request in for Morgan, but they play it too early, and, and Morgan McDonald goes to sixties. <laughs> that, that's got to be illegal. I mean, I'm not sure how much it would be enforced. I'm just imagining. I'm thinking of, say, like a big marathon. Surely, a lot of people running that marathon are holding their phones. Oh yeah. To music. Yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent. I mean, I've seen photos of people doing that. Yeah. So, so people do it, I guess. Maybe if, like in the non-elite field. I was gonna say, maybe if you're running elite. like, if you're running maybe, uh, if you're not running like a two ten marathon, you're probably I mean, two, it, running a two ten marathon with holding a phone and earpods would be very hard. I feel. Nice conversion. I was I was actually wishing wishing that I had music yesterday because I was like I really need to dial in and, mm. and get focused in. They need to figure out a way to do it with the watches. They do. I know, but like better. What do you mean? Like, I feel like you have to down, you have to download everything onto a watch, right? Yeah. They should do like a cloud system where like your Apple Music is just on your watch as you, like a. You probably can on. I bet on an Apple Watch, you don't have to download it. Oh, my old Apple Watch. No, I, because because you need your phone there. I think. That's oh, pretty yeah. annoying. I think you need your phone to like because I don't. Well, actually, I've never had an Apple Watch that. Can you buy an Apple Watch that has um like five G internet? Yeah, yeah. I think I have you can. no idea. Yeah, maybe maybe those ones you don't. I've only had the one that you need that doesn't have that. That like everything goes through your phone. So I don't. Know. Well, I, don't, I so I was cleaning out my room a couple of weeks ago, and I found my my old iPod Shuffle from like literally ten years ago, and that's been a game changer. It's the one that is like a tiny little rectangle that clips onto your shorts. Clip. Yeah, it's the best. Oh, so good. Why did they stop making that? That was such a so good, good device. It's so good for it's running. Probably your shit. worth five dollars now. Yeah. Like, did you did you did you run on that the other day? Is yeah, that what you're using? Yeah. yeah. And the funniest thing about it is, it's it's just all my music from ten years ago, and it's like all these songs that I haven't heard in. Are they bangers. Straight bangers. <laughs> it's, it's so good. It's so good. That's awesome. Uh, yeah, it's really been uh, really been pumping me up on the solo runs recently, but yeah. Ollie and Morgs, we're feeling pretty good going into this race, and 
not just our events. There's plenty of good action here at the Aussie Trials. We're not the Nationals, whatever you want to call it, uh, this week. We're not really going to preview it, but I think everyone knows what the – I mean, every event is really exciting, I think. Maybe just highlight the women's 1500 will be absolute banger where those three spots, like everyone who's competing for those three spots on the team are real, like this is the talent level so high. Like these people are going to be probably making the finals of the Olympics. Like that's how good they are. And then even, you know, potentially fighting for medals and stuff. So it's a very exciting crop coming through there. And uh, I don't know what else is notable. I mean, they're all notable. I mean, the craziest thing is like, uh, it's it is crazy. It's not as deep, but the women's high jump has two world champions competing for a national title. Mm-hmm. That's pretty crazy. I didn't think about that. That's like crazy, and like those two. I think Nicole was silver at Tokyo. Eleanor won Eugene, and then yeah. Nicole won indoors. I think. How are the international <laughs> entries looking? Sure. Uh, a, we got a Fijian yeah. in the fifteen hundred. No Santana. No, no Santana. Santana. Yeah, Sam. Sam doesn't want that smoke. No, I'm kidding. Um, I saw you do. You have got a Kiwi in the 800, though. Who is it? Brad. Oh, Brad. Yeah, yeah. That mate. Yeah. I mean, the 800 is also extremely stacked. I mean, there's uh, Peyton I Craig. Just, and... I should have just come down. Yeah. Yeah. Just hop in. Hop in yeah, for yeah, but then I think people would have gotten people would have wigged out about it because then if they saw George in the 15 they'd be like oh he's there to pace Ollie I was like do you see George run have you ever seen George race he's not here to pace Ollie <laughs> he's just here to race baby it, it is kind of weird in those events uh, well I guess every event that has a heat in a finals when you do have the internationals and then an international person is, is you know knock, knock, knocking you out yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, that, I don't under, I don't really understand that but I understand it more in cross country where it like doesn't doesn't like change the race but or if it's a one if it's a one like it's one heat yeah. one race yeah 5k or something but i guess that's that's just how it goes if you're gonna yeah. be competing to win you, you gotta be making it through so no i think it'll be it'll be very very good competition across the board i think just being an olympic year everyone is turning up and um Ollie and i are both just very excited to be down here to be a part of it happy to happy to be here you know because it's it doesn't happen all the time i guess the olympics only comes around at once every four years generally this this time three years yeah. three in this case <laughs> yeah three in this case it's very special for us so we're excited and um yeah if you can please check out the races because i think they'll be awesome and it, even if even if the live stream is hard to find athletics australia normally does a really good job at getting up a youtube video post-race mm. So hopefully it's very accessible. But follow along on Instagram for more information on that. So yeah, that's it. That's it for us, us, I guess. George, let's 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 take us to Boulder. Should we hear a little Boulder update? Take us to Boulder. Well, we had we had quite the weekend. Apparently we made the someone said we made the New York Times. Like huge freaking something about um uh if anyone saw it. I don't know who reads the New York Times. We had a, a wee power outage. For actually a freaking long ass power outage, like a day and a half. It was looking like some strong winds were coming in. Like last week, we were like, "Oh yeah, like this weekend is looking looking pretty windy, <laughs> looking real windy." They were like forecasting like seventy plus seventy five mile an hour winds, like a hundred and one hundred ten to one hundred and twenty kilometer hour winds, when like Saturday. A uh, cyclone. I think it said over seventy two or something was like hurricane for us <laughs> on like the scale of uh wow. on apple's we, we win scale and so a couple of years ago we had like boulder had a really bad fire that burned down hundreds of houses hundreds mm. down, hundreds um and supposedly like power lines were involved or something well it helped start it fuel went i can't really remember what the deal was but in order to uh, reduce the risk of that, they like before it had even got that windy on Saturday afternoon, three PM, power it out, <laughs> and and not like it was a little bit spotty. Like we had no power, and the gym had no power. I was gonna go run on the treadmill in the afternoon because it was like by like four or five it was supposed to be like sixty plus already. I was like, I don't really want to be out in that, but then the gym had no power, so treadmills weren't going to go only long had uh 
quicker head power still and and no what head power but um mario's house didn't have power boulder most of boulder didn't have power so that was um that was quite eventful so we cooked dinner in the dark had some bit of a candle lit uh candle lit affair quite romantic but um and then changed uh sunday's workout which was going to be uh quite the challenge on the track um, took a nut. Well, I didn't end up doubling because we postponed the workout. So he was like, "All right, no one, no one double. Like it's like legit dangerous out there. You're gonna get hit by a tree or something." Oh, <laughs> Even no one out, and I was, I was a bit concerned. She's crazy. Yeah, I think Cinta right. was the only one who doubled because she had a friend or something <laughs> that wanted to run, which she's sounded. So um, I don't know. Maybe she only ran like three miles or something. I think, but she was crazy. I did not want to go out in that. I did eventually drive in it, and it was like pretty crazy. It was like. White you could was, feel not it. as bad as I thought it was going to be, but but quite uh, quite eventful. And so um, car tipping over, <laughs> car just flies over. I I was thinking like they've got to be like those big semi trucks on I twenty five, like they catch oh, a yeah. lot of wind. Yeah, yeah. I w- maybe they're like heavy. I guess they're probably like heavy enough at the bottom to not flip over, but that's kind of wild. Yeah. There's actually less damage than I thought too. There is a tree down on the trail at Nawa. Like on the little cool down trail, you had to you got to climb over a tree right there. But otherwise, like surprisingly, not as much damage as you would think. And we got power at like it was over twenty four hours. We got like four p.m. yesterday, maybe. So it was off for like a day and a bit, which was wild. No um, Wi Fi, no Wi Fi for over twenty four hours. That's kind of crazy. Yeah. Luckily, we have a guest cool though, experience. so cooking was very manageable was say, and like we could still make coffee and tea and people people, and people like that gas must have been screwed yeah they, they couldn't cook anything at Cinta's place and then yeah their place had a out as well so what do they do for food they, they just uh they just foraged starved I think. <laughs> <laughs> you can't really get doordash either because no one's driving in those conditions either like you can't get food and like those uh, places would have, be well, well, you could closed drive, you could drive to longmont oh yeah true longmont yeah, yeah. yeah. I offered the. I asked if they wanted to eat Gus, but um, they. How is he instead. looking though? Can we get a Gus update? Just a little, just a little. Uh, you Gus, can have a Gus, Gus update. Juicy. He, he's he's completely blind now, after looking at the eclipse directly. I tr- I tried, I tried to tell him, I tried to tell him not to stare at the sun, but he wouldn't listen, and yeah. he really wanted he, to see the eclipse. So he's totally he's totally blind. Totally blind. He needs a walking um, stick now. Like a cane. <laughs> you think his other senses are so good, he doesn't need sight. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> just not true. <laughs> <laughs> so apart from that, uh, Gus is great. Same old. Same old. He's alive. Lovely. Alive and alive and well. Yeah, I was alive. worried that you might have cooked him over the power outage. I was like, shit, this might be it for Gus. <laughs> he might go first. I don't think. Yeah, I don't think he noticed. To be honest, <laughs> not a <laughs> not a big user of his life. He doesn't use a lot of appliances in the house, just some. But no. um, he was just trying to go on Instagram. He's like, "What's going on?" <laughs> yeah, he's, he's, check, he's checking out the uh, Twitter updates about the uh, power outage. Yeah, and so we ended up working out this morning, and now it's quite nice and bold. It was sunny, a little breezy, just like a normal sunny breezy day at Nowat. Beautiful day for some some track stuff and, how, and that's, that's the boulder update training? i think well we haven't had you for two weeks so what's what's the george specific training update life update um uh, this is four four number four here these are these are rookie numbers can be at the last episode uh training you know what i'm just trying to make it um to tomorrow when jason gets here <laughs> that's been that's been the training outlook for the past like 10 days. So nothing's like actually like I've been running a little, like I cut a few miles last week, like 10 to 15, maybe a couple of doubles and some runs. So I tweaked my ankle in the gym a couple of weeks ago, like completely unrelated to running, just like a little sprain in the gym and it just like hurt a little bit for a couple of days. So I took a couple of days easy and then got back into running and it like, just kind of came right like a sprained ankle did does but like i don't know just the way my body operates and being not very i don't know i'm more like morgan something is a little off everything's fucked (laughs) and (laughs) yeah 
and so I think like the rest of my body was like searching for stability and like mobility from having a janky ankle for like a week. And so every single other part of my body hurt <laughs> for like yeah. 10 days. It was it's very frustrating. Not... Yeah. Um, but like, yeah, like not an injury, just like feeling bad running for a, we can call 10 it days probably. I feel like that's a niggle. That's not an injury. It was like something, it was like a different niggle like every single day. <laughs> it was like, it was like my hip and then it was my, and then it was the other foot and then it was like just Keep all on your toes. Place. Yeah. So that was a bit annoying. Um, your carbs are okay though, right? I don't know, bro. We'll see on this double. I'm we about might, to go on. They might need It'll to be something on. new. So I'm just very much looking forward to Jason coming tomorrow and hopefully like sorting out whatever's, <laughs> if there's anything still left. Like I, I'm sure there's still a little bit of like inflammation and stiffness in that ankle from like spraining it a little bit but actually had me and yarad had a nice workout today and mario mario does some shorter faster stuff these days but he was with us for 80 percent of it um so yeah there not not a lot of us on the track these days with um the internationals mostly mostly overseas and Joe Clicker on the Zwift grind, as mm. uh, you would have seen if you follow him on Instagram and or Strava. Swift. <laughs> Swift. I went on his Strava <laughs> to check out his update. So I think I saw, I don't know, on Instagram, he's like, yeah, check out my Strava for a more in-depth update on the cross training. And he's not mucking about. If you want to see what some in-depth cross training <laughs> looks like, you definitely go check out his Strava. It's pretty interesting. He's He's doing a great job of just ticking all the boxes, I would say. Like he's... He's not. He doesn't do it um, half-heartedly. He does. He does literally everything in turn. From he's got the Zwift going, so he's putting in the like actual decent, solid, hard rides, and then he's on the elliptical at altitude. He's got the altitude mask on while he's on the. Elliptical. Do you know? Do you know what altitude he's elliptically at? <laughs> he said you can't. Like, there's no way to like tell. He That's just kind of goes off like. <laughs> yeah if he, he starts going blue take rate. it off take the mask off if he starts going like blue take the not, mask off. if he's not wearing it his heart rate's like 120 or something he puts it on and it's like 150 or 160 or something. like for That's example like he just kind of goes off heart rate it just like makes his heart rate higher fair enough so and then the other thing that he's doing which is 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 really smart but also like really taxing on your body is he's doing some blood flow restriction um stuff which he, he said he was doing it walking on the treadmill, I think, which is to me crazy because when I did it, I was just doing like some squats and it was so painful and so hard for those who don't know. There's, it, it's a pretty, well, I, I don't actually know how, I think it's pretty legit. You know, there's a lot of different like stuff going on out there, but I think this type of um, training is pretty legit in terms of if you're injured and you can't, uh, like generate lactic acid and stuff in your legs. You put these things on that cut off your circulation to a certain extent and then you do some activities. So yeah, for me it was squats, which oh it's walking. And your legs just get flooded with the lactic acid and it really feels like you're doing some intense rep in, in a workout. And uh, it's just something that I think otherwise is almost impossible to get through all the cross training and that. So he's uh, he's ticking all the boxes. It's very impressive. He said he said he was walking on the uh treadmill and it felt like he was like at an all-out sprint <laughs> it's, it's, it's really painful like it, in the in a good way like in a way that like holy shit how is this this is maybe not healthy really right? painful in a good way <laughs> so uh, that's good that he's, he's doing all that stuff and i'm sure it's gonna pay off big so yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> that's uh, the that's the life update that's the boulder update boulder update there we go I love it. I love it. Well, we've actually already covered most of the things that we wanted to today. I think in closing, maybe uh, George, do you have any tips for us going into these national championships? Because obviously you, um, you, know, you know about running a national championship, George, as yeah? A, as a very recent championship winner, a big championship, <laughs> the world championship. The last national you know. championships I ran were Australian championships. Really? <laughs> I've, I've run Australian championships more recently then I've run New Zealand championships because it was like a week later. I did yeah. pretty bad, I think. I came like, I feel like I came like sixth 
in the 1500. Under, so under 20, maybe? I'm pretty sure Charlie Hunter won. Uh, this yeah, is like bro. 20... That's a while ago. What are we, 2014? 10, like 10 years ago. That was 10 years ago. Last... Oh my... Shit, I'm so old. Cameron Myers would have been... <laughs> How old? <laughs> He's like probably yeah. eight years old. Eight years old when you're in that. Yeah, possibly not born. Not sure. <laughs> <laughs> we have to ask him. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um. No. No tips. I think no I've got tips. a lot of confidence in you boys. No tips. Just the tip. Oh, Just the okay. tip. Thanks. Thanks, George. We I'm excited that. to watch. I'll be. I'll be staying up for it. <clears throat> I'll, have oh, Gus. Yeah. I'll put Gus in front of the screen. You can't see anyway. He's blind. <laughs> <laughs> no, you bet. Commentary. Commentary. Yeah. Perfect. Perfect. Hopefully, is Mitch Dwyer commentating? That guy, he'd be great on the commentary. He would be great. I don't know if he's been promoted that highly, but... <laughs> yeah, some yeah. He, he'll, he'll do his own commentary and you can follow it later, maybe. Or maybe on his Instagram or something. Yeah. yeah, following follow straight at it if you want like really good Australian champs coverage. You know what? Say. He probably won't be commentating because he'll probably be doing interviews. Yeah, media. Yeah. yeah, I'm sure he will be there with the media credential doing post race interviews. So, Outstanding. Yeah. Well, George, right. thank you very much Boys, for joining us. Yeah, lovely to be here. Good luck. Thanks, George. We hey, appreciate it. We appreciate down. it. And thank you very much, everyone, for listening. Once again, this has been episode 132 of the Coffee Club Podcast. That's it from us. Wish us luck, and we'll see you all again next week. Coffee Club.